Good morning. Welcome to St. John United Methodist Church. We're delighted to have you with us in worship today and welcome to all of our online visitors. We hope you'll leave a note and let us know in the comments that you've been worshiping with us. My name is Beth Dixon. I'm one of the staff members. Some quick announcements. The leadership board will be meeting today right after church. So a reminder for those folks, everyone is always welcome to attend uh, the leadership board meetings, but the leadership board is required. So we hope y'all um, have a, a successful meeting this afternoon. And then everybody will come back at three o'clock for our first concert with a cause of the season. We're looking forward to that. There will be a reception in the courtyard after, after the concert, so please join us for that. And thank you to Nick and Jason who helped get the fountain working again this morning. <laughs> so we'll have that uh, in the background. We're doing dinner tomorrow night for the Wesley Foundation. I believe that all of the slots are filled. Thank you to Allison Wright who coordinates that for, each, for us each time. And thanks to all of you who have volunteered to spend your time and bring some food for the, the folks across the street at the Wesley Foundation. We know that they appreciate it. The youth are having a retreat in November, the 10th through the 12th, grade six through 12th, will be headed to Elijah Clark State Park for fishing and fellowship. To sign up, please see Stephanie Quattlebaum. There is a deposit due in a couple of weeks, but we hope that our youth will have a wonderful time and so be in prayer and preparation for that for them. Trunk or treat we'd like to do in October, but we know with the attic sale, a lot of our time and energy here is being pulled in different directions. If you're willing to host a trunk, please see Pam Light, or you can let me know after worship today. We do need to kind of know this week if we've got enough volunteers so that next week we can start asking for the donations of the items to give out at the trunk or treat. If you are new to our fellowship, um, we have the last couple of years flip the script on trunk or treats and our kids and families and members have given out treats to our neighbors at the towers items that they could use throughout the week and so that's been a fun a fun way to be in mission with our partner next door the attic sale again is coming up and they are still in need of volunteers they have set up a sign up genius for times to help the day of and also help sorting items in advance so that is linked in our e-news I believe it's been posted in our private Facebook group so if you would like need access to that or have questions you can see me and I can point you in the right direction but they are still needing volunteers for that if you are not connected with us if you are new to the fellowship and have not joined our private Facebook group that is where we post some kind of church specific announcements and needs we also have a remind code that we do use periodically. I sent out a text this morning reminding people um, that the Iron Man was going on. So if you haven't connected with us in those ways, we'll make sure that gets put in the e-news or if you haven't joined the e-news list um, so that you can make sure you're getting communication from the church. We wanna make sure everybody is connected to what is going on. Thank you again for being with us today in worship and we'll now begin our worship of Almighty God. Hello, 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 hello. This is number one. Really? I can't hear it. She says no. Um, we have some things to invite you. Ah, there it is. We invite you to sing with us today. Choir, will you come get into position for us? First, in the bulletin, there's a little insert. The Tree of Life. This is our anthem. When we come to the end of the anthem, you're invited to stand and sing the final verse with us. It's a really great piece with beautiful words, and I wanted you to be able to see the text. So there it is. You can understand clearly what we're singing. And we also want you to join in singing that final verse with us. So thank you for that. For the call to worship, we also invite you to sing with us in three parts. Are you scared? <laughs> Let us show you how easy it is. Handbell people, give me a chord. <laughs> the first group will sing this. Come, let us sing our praise to the Lord. Do it with them. Come. One more time. Come, 
beautifully done, part one, part two, people. Here's what yours sounds like. And uh, boom. Well done. And here's part three. There are not very many of you, so it's up to you, Philip. Sing big. Part three, let's hear ya. And uh, come before him, sing his praise. Easy. Come before him, singing his praise. Cool. And it all works together. Let's get those bells going. One, two. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all the Let us pray. Oh God, from your providing hand, even the dissatisfied and grumbling receive what they need for their lives. Teach us your ways of justice, and lead us to practice your generosity so that we may live a life worthy of the gospel made known through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And now let us greet one another with signs of peace and love.
our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what, what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked towards the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, at twilight you shall eat meat and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. Our psalm is number 105 on page 828. give thanks to the Lord, call on God's name, make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord, sing praises, tell all God's wonderful works. 
Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek the Lord's presence continually. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and judgments God has uttered. Lord is our God, whose judgments are in all the earth. The Lord is mindful of his everlasting covenant, of the word and the generations. The covenant made with Abraham, his promise sworn to Isaac and confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, No, I've got some money in this bag. Who would like a penny? You would like a penny? Okay. There's you a penny. You would like a nickel. You want a nickel? Okay. Who would like a dime? Oh, you would like a Gonna be in trouble with the sound guy. Okay. Does anybody want to file a complaint? Why would you file a complaint? It's not fair for everyone. Some people got more and some people got less, right? And I'm the landowner, and guess what? I still have some more money. Okay? So, we get caught up sometimes in wondering if life is fair, okay? But you know what? Pastor Jeff, by giving any of you anything, is just being generous. So, here you go. Just take some of what you need, whatever you think you need. Here we go. Nope, don't want any. There you go. In the, in the Bible story in the Old Testament, people were complaining. They didn't think God had been fair to them. And in the New Testament story, we're going to hear about some workers who also didn't think that God had been fair to them. Okay? But in reality, our God is always generous, and life, though it's sometimes unfair, is always God's gifts to us. And so we need to live in gratitude and in thanksgiving. Whether we have a penny, or whether we have a quarter, or whether we don't have a dime to our name, we are still given the gift of life by our God who is generous and provides for us. Okay? Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Loving God, I thank you for the children of our church. And I also thank you this morning that they really didn't complain very much. They lead the way for us. Loving God, bless them that always in their life, even when it's unfair to them, that they would see your generosity and your grace in the name of Christ. Amen.
Now, I invite you to be generous, and when the offering plate comes by, you can put your change in there for the church, okay? That sounds like a good plan. Somebody take the rest of my change. Oops, I've got a little thing in there. I don't want to give away my Greek cross. Give that to the offering plate. God bless you, and we'll see you next Sunday, okay? are able for the reading of the gospel according to St. Matthew. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers, laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, these last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But, when he, but he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be seated. Within the last month of college, I had not, re I didn't know what I was going to do yet. Um, I had applied to seminary at different schools and had not heard back from Candler at Emory. And so one day, within just a few weeks left, I was walking through campus at LaGrange College when the president of LaGrange College, Dr. Stuart Gully, stopped me and said, have you heard, he asked, have you heard back from Candler? See, everyone in my graduating class within my major, we were all going to graduate school. And it was a big deal to have everyone in one group already all know what was next, except for me. I had not really, I had applied, but then, you know, life moves on. Senior year of college is a lot of fun. Spending those last few moments with my friends was the most important. And there was an application out there, I knew. But when he asked me, I said, well, no, I haven't heard back from them. And he was like, you have 20 days left. So he said, let me call and see what's happened. That afternoon, my dorm phone rang, pre-cell phone. And it was Candler telling me I had been accepted and I needed to come up and sign some paperwork and that I needed to come like the next day. Just like that, the last student, I'm sure I wasn't the last student accepted, but boy, did it feel like it. For when I showed up, my folder, you know, they have when you apply for school and they have all your records and all this stuff. You have it all in this big, thick folder. This is pre-digital. And it all comes all bent. And she was like, yeah, I think your stuff just ended up behind and, or under the filing cabinet. And I saw it. And she's like, so we need you to just do everything right now. 
and we'll pay, we'll buy you a lunch, which, you know, Emory University does not like to buy you a lunch. So I, here I was at, you know, 22, signing my life away to this bent folder that was stuck under the cabinet that I only happened to be in that room because someone who used to work at Emory University realized there was no reason for me not to know yet. It took someone stopping me in the middle of my day and getting my attention. And all of a sudden, a whole new door opened for me to walk through. I think about that sometimes wondering, well, what would I have done if Dr. Gully hadn't stopped me on campus that day? I already had a job lined up for the summer. Did I just think at 22 everything was just going to work out? I had colleagues who were planning on getting married. They were very stressed. They were taking jobs and heading into graduate school right away. I was just planning on the last party of the year, wondering what was going to happen next, but not thinking too much about it. Timing is everything. In Jesus' day, Rome was the biggest employer. The Herod of the Bible that we think of the most actually died the year Jesus was born, who built the beautiful palace overlooking the Dead Sea, who built the city of Jerusalem into its greatness, who understood that being a good ruler meant also being friends with the Pharisees and Sadducees and the inner city of Jerusalem, where you could pretend some days to be Jewish and then some days to not. Power came with cost, but for everyone living without power, Jesus' message was completely opposite of everything they had learned or experienced or saw firsthand in life. For they were experiencing a divine mercy that was going to give them a different way of counting, a schedule that wasn't going to be the same as Herod's, a showing up that wasn't going to have the same time. For Jesus is bringing something different and showing us that in God's power, God does things in God's own way, different than what anyone in that day was experiencing from Rome. So those who showed up late received the same pay. Those who showed up early just had a full day of work and received the same pay. This parable can get to us worker bees. I've never counted myself as a worker bee. You know, I just enjoy the day. That's how you end up in graduate school at the last minute. But I know people who count every second of the day, who worry about it every second of the day, who would just be so bugged by this parable. Because you know what? There's something about it that can bother, bother us. God is always in the showing up in ways through Christ that takes our assumptions of how this life should be and how things should work out and how fairness is and shows us a new way of loving and living and offering grace that is just plain different. It's looking at life as this great gift from God and remembering that we are all recipients of this gift, and knowing that when we face these challenging decisions within life, 
God pushes us to see things differently, to slow down and deliberately look at what's before us. And just maybe when we deliberately look with what's in in front of us, we can remember peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. We can remember that the world's expectations of us can be so heavy, but that God's expectation of us is a light burden. It's the burden of love. It's the burden of stop counting time. It's the burden of seeing a world where everything that God has given us is a free grace for us to enjoy. When we see the world and people as gifts, then just maybe we can begin to see this parable as what it is. We all find ourselves at times being the one who showed up late. Being the one who struggles in the moment. Being the one where everybody may look around and say, well, how did that end up good for them? When we are looking around and wondering, well, how did that end up good? Remember that all of God's good gifts, all that is good that is given to us, is a gift from God. And we can decide, we can discern what goodness is. Because goodness is wrapped in love and forgiveness and hope and joy and peace and patience and kindness and self-control. Then we know that we have experienced and received a good gift. In a world where time matters, where stress can overcome, where we find ourselves in airports that are too crowded, waiting for that baggage, will it ever show up? In a town where one train can make us late to wherever we're going. In a community that is growing faster and faster and where every city block is under construction, slow down. Take time to see the goodness of God at work. Be grateful for the moments where you received that good gift. And remember that we have that most difficult challenge of knowing that the last will be first and the first will be last. In our family, we call that the Jesus rules. Oh, we can really throw a game of tag in the yard into fits. But the last will be first and the first will be last. So when we're trying to speed ahead, slow down. It's not worth it. Give things time. When we get caught up in our worker bee moments, remember the practice of peace. And remember that we are all workers in the vineyard, showing up to God in our own unique way because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And in that, there is a great goodness that the kingdom is bigger than we can ever expect, and there's a place for all of us there. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we all show up late sometimes, or we show up way too early. Let our lives find a peace and a rhythm that reflects your love and your goodness. Let us trust in your timing. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
And now please stand for our affirmation of faith. And let's recite it together. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to be seated. We'll have a few moments of silent prayer, and then I will lead us in prayer together. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for the gifts of this beautiful day. We thank, we're thankful for the start of a new season. We wonder how August and September can feel like one month. But then we look around and we see the change as the sun is a little less hotter, as trees begin to shine new colors. And we're grateful for your, these reminders, Lord, that your time is very different than our timing. Lord, today we pray for those who are running past our church as a celebration of fitness and the amazing things that these bodies that you have gifted us can do. We pray for those who are participating and enjoying life this day. Lord, you have put a race before all of us, a challenge at times. Some days come to us very easily, where we can see your good works. But then some days, we barely make it through, realizing we haven't seen anything good at all. Guide us, Lord, so that our eyes and hearts and minds may serve our neighbors in need, may see your kingdom here on earth, may be people of love and hope and good works. And at the end of each long day, we are grateful for your love. And at the end of each great day, we are still grateful for that love, Lord. Lord, help us to be people who see your works and know that you count things differently. But in the end, you welcome all of us to you in love. Let our message to our community be one of welcome. That no matter where we are in this life, we have a place within the body of Christ. And as your children, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward with our morning's offering. May our gifts today go to the work of God's good kingdom.
You're invited to stand and sing as we close worship this morning. Join us this afternoon for our first of our concert series. Go cheer on some racers downtown. Go now in the grace, peace, and love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 